Okay, so we're on the air now. Hey, everybody. So, um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Google Plus Hangout with um, Elizabeth Cunningham and Maeve, uh, the audacious heroine of the Maeve Chronicles, and Elizabeth's alter ego, or is Elizabeth Maeve's alter ego? I'm not quite sure. Um, you'll have to be the judge of that. So, welcome Elizabeth Maeve, and you can unmute your um, microphone. We're very honored to have you here, and we're all excited to explore with you this wonderful heroine that you've created. I hope, I guess I did just unmute it. I'm being a little distracted by technology, and I don't understand why my skin looks green, <laughs> and everybody else. <laughs> all the rest of you have much better color. Um, I'm sitting in a window with the sunset on me. Doesn't seem to be too flattering, but anyway. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for figuring all this out, Stephanie. We're figuring out as we go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, before we begin, I'd like for everybody here to introduce themselves. We're re really happy to have you here, Elizabeth. Um, so, um, let's just, I'm going to um, click on you. Everybody can unmute their microphones and just say a few words about why you wanted to be here and what your name is and where, where you're from. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Jane. Those are just say your name and where you're from. Okay, I'm um, Jane Cunningham and I'm from Tangerei in New Zealand. I'm, I'm Lisa Hoffman from Omaha, but in New Zealand. <laughs> okay. okay. And who do we have here? Eve. Unmute your microphone, Eve. Did you see the mic? Click the microphone. Eve is my Kimbrova okay, from the first century. There she is. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> Good. All right. So tell us your name and where you're from, Eve. My name is Eve Diaz, and I'm from Sacramento, California. Oh, great. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. And over here we have Carol. You can. Are you unmuted, Carol? Kara. No, you're not unmuted. I don't know if I am. See the little microphone up in the right hand corner? Click on that. Let's see if we get you. On. It wasn't the microphone in the upper corner, it was the bottom for me. Okay. Just see there. the little microphone icon? Can you hear? Oh. Okay, you can hear us. All right, well, if you can't get it turned on, you can just use the group chat. Okay, let us know. This is Carol Davidson, and you are also in New Zealand. Is that correct? Wow, <laughs> go New Zealand. All right. Sacramento, yay. Great. All right, so um, I don't know if we're going to have any more, um, but let's just proceed with the group that we have now. So um, everybody's kind of introduced themselves and I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Stephanie Anderson Ladd. Huh? Oh, there's somebody. Hi. Oh, do we have somebody new? Yeah, we have Angela Lee. Great. I'm going to click on Angela. Angela, can you hear us? There she is. Where is it? I don't know how to do it. My cat. Okay. Hi, Angela. Hi, Angela. Angela, can you click on your microphone? It's muted.
can you hear? Okay, is it? I think Angela? Can, can you guys hear me? I think there's two mics. There's one in the upper right okay, hand. Okay, so me. Angela and Carol, you're somehow either your microphone's not turned on or it's muted. So um, if you can figure out how to unmute it, let us know. Um, otherwise, you can just chat with us on the see the little um, icon that has the chat function, so you can write questions or comments. Okay, once we get past the technological issues here, we should be good to go. So Eve, you said for the name that popped up under the picture unmuted it properly? Huh. Okay, does everybody see the, their name underneath their picture? No. Yeah, can you hear me now? All right. Okay, so um, Angela, um, can you write in on the text where you're from? Do you see the text? No, I don't. Okay. All right, well, Google Plus is obviously new to all of us, and it's, you know, it's a technology that's going to take us a while to get used to. But let's go ahead um, with the Hangout, and at least you're here, and um, you can hear. Everybody can hear, so that's good. Um, so anyway, I wanted to host this Hangout um, today um, as I'm offering a three-month um, Goddess Mystery School, New Moon Goddess Mystery School this summer on July 8th on um, the Cancer New Moon. And the Cancer New Moon is the moon of the new moon of the mother goddess so it's kind of the perfect month to do a, um, a course on the two Marys which I'm offering in July so that's the Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene and um, I've always been fascinated with these two goddesses um, in fact they uh, came to me um, about 15 years ago when I had thyroid cancer and I was doing some healing work um, and I was really surprised because I did not grow up Catholic and I had no relationship with these goddesses and there they were both of them so I um, developed a relationship with them and they were very helpful to me and I continue to work with them so um, when I uh, read the Maeve Chronicles, I felt like that was a whole new way of seeing Mary Magdalene that uh, I always felt, of course, she was the earthy one and the one I could relate to the most, um, whereas Mother Mary was much more, you know, ethereal and, and um, hard to reach, not as accessible as Mary Magdalene. So anyway, reading the Maeve Chronicles just really brought her to life and you know, I can't think of Mary Magdalene now without, you know, thinking of Maeve and really seeing Maeve um, in my mind's eye. So, um, and I know all of you here are Maeve fans and have read the book, so um, I thought it would be really fun for us to talk to Elizabeth and Maeve about this character that she's obviously done so much research on and you know, thought so much about and lived with for, gee, how many years? 20. Um, Elizabeth. 20. I'm going to unmute Elizabeth. Oh, I didn't know I was muted. Elizabeth, are you unmuted? I am unmuted. Okay. There, I hear you now. That's an understatement. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, 20 years. 20 years, wow. Well, yeah, maybe more than that. I mean, 20 years of writing the books. Okay, gosh. Yeah. She showed up in 1990, so I guess it's been 23 years now that she's been hanging out. Mm -hmm. So how long did it take you to write that? The first book was A Passion of Mary Magdalene, right? Well, actually, that's the second book that I wrote. It was oh, okay. the first book that the publisher, that, that my current publisher published. Oh, okay. Because I had a former publisher, and the Magdalene Rising was published in 2000 as Daughter of the Shining Isles and then I left that publisher 
and my new publisher wanted to lead with passion because he thought, you know, because he thought it was hot because it was that year that Dan Brown was coming out with his movie. So. Right. Uh -huh. so he was basically persuaded by the commercial possibilities. So I really worked hard to make that a standalone. I worked hard to make them all a standalone. But of course, you know, if you really want to know the story, you've got to start at the beginning and read all the way to the end. Yeah. It's much more satisfying now. But you can read them in any order, really, and people yeah. have. Yeah. So you did write them in chronological order, then? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so, let's see. One of the things um, I was wanting you to do, Elizabeth, is um, I'm going to switch over and I'm going to try going back and forth here. So one of the things I wanted you to do, if you would, so that some people on this um, who are listening to this may not be familiar with uh, the Maeve Chronicles and how you've transmogrified um, Mary Magdal Magdalene into Maeve, a Celtic goddess. Could you tell us a little bit, just maybe in a, you know, kind of a synopsis of what the Maeve Chronicles um, are about? Well, the Maeve Chronicles are fiction. So I tried to write them with enough historical accuracy and detail that that many people now believe they're not fiction, but they really are. Um, I didn't set out to write about Mary Magdalene. Maeve arrived in the form of Madge, a 20th century um, prostitute, actually, who was a painter. She couldn't support herself with painting, so she was a prostitute. She was a cartoon character. And she was fun. She came to me when I had finished another book and I didn't feel like I could write anymore, so she, here she showed up naked, mouthy, and um, I thought she'd be a very cool character to work with. But she thought my ideas for a conventional novel were really boring. Mm -hmm. I've been rejected by publishers and agents, but I'd never been rejected by a character before. But finally, when I came up with the idea that Madge Magdalene, red hair, Celt, Celtic Mary Magdalene, she liked that idea, and she said, yes, I'll, I'll be that, I'll do that. So whether or not that's who she was and she was waiting for me to discover it, or whether or not she was just like, well, you need to be sufficiently outrageous, that's how it happened. So, um, you know, it's very controversial to cast her as a whore because a lot of people think that's a stereotype left over from the patriarchy, but she's um, different. She's not a penitent anything. No, thank God. I also feel as a feminist, I feel like we can't draw our skirts back from whores if we're really going to be standing with and for all women. So I thought if people are like distancing themselves, then I need to go there. Yes. So. And Maeve didn't give me any choice anyway, because that's how she showed up. Yeah, I know. There's still this controversy um, whether she was a prostitute or not. And, you know, what they say, well, there's nothing in the scriptures that says she was, but yet... No, there isn't. No one knows. Right. But she is now, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well... She's much more interesting this way. I think there's a tradition that, in Jewish tradition, there's something called Midrash which means that you can take the scriptures and if there's a little gap or you don't know something, you can make it up. So I really think that's my genre. Yeah. Well, and then this idea of the sacred prostitute, which, you know, I think that word may have had different meaning um, at one time. And, um, you know, the priestesses in the temples were uh, performing sacred rites. Um, and having, you know, sexual sacred rites. So uh, do you think there's a possibility? I know that's been uh, discussed that Mary Magdalene actually may have been a priestess. In the sure, I think it, she's up for grabs, basically. I yeah. mean, really, if you read even the Gospel of Mary, which is much more like my character, Mary of Bethany, or you read anything from that time or anything from the Gospels, you, nobody knows. Yeah. So you get to make it up. Some people have said, well, gosh, she probably was a prostitute because she was independent and had her own money. Um, of course, other women did too. Someone like pointed out that um, some of the women in the New Testament, like Priscilla, they were business women. So really the truth is no one knows. Right. So yeah. it was so just too good to pass school. up. Okay. Well, um, so I know you're going to sing us the prologue to uh, The Passion of Mary Magdalene. Um, which is um, on the Passion of Mary Magdalene, and um, it's on your Maeve song CD. Maven song, yeah.
Maven song, I'm sorry. Yes, and that is available, uh, if anybody hasn't heard it, it's on, uh, you can find it on CD Baby. You can go to my website and just click and it'll take you there. My oh, website okay. is elizabethcunninghamwrites.com. All right. Um, so this is just a wonderful way to um, get to know, get a flavor for um, the Magdala and um, as the opening to the novel, it's such a teaser as to what's to come because um, Mary Maeve has a long ways to go from the, yeah, a long way. the Temple Magdalene. Do you would like me to sing that? Yes. Okay. But before I before I forget, I want everyone to see that the paintings behind me are were painted by Jane Cunningham, my long lost, long found cousin from New Zealand. And Jane, what kind of wood are they painted on? Can can she be unmuted yes. for a minute? Did you hear that question? It's um, it's it's marine grade ply, so it's just from a boat building place in town. Oh, oh wow. wow! So, and I kind of like that because the sea is such a part of the story and. Yes. Yeah. And water is such a part of the story that it felt right too. So. Yeah. And Jane just sent Jane me just a, sent a picture, which I don't have here, I don't oh, I'm echoing, um, of Maeve as an older woman with the phrase, all temples fall on it. I treasure these paintings. They're wonderful. I'm going to take off my glasses. I can't see any, but I, I can't sing the prologue with glasses on. It just doesn't seem right. I hope I remember it after singing it a couple, a few hundred times, but <laughs> I didn't practice today. I've had a little sore throat, but we'll see. This story begins in the night. There will be a dawn. I promise. I will also tell of mornings when I didn't want to wake. And noons full of harsh light and judgment. Sometimes. There will be ease and shade in the afternoon, camaraderie and rest, even pleasure. There will be passion, I promise. Morning, noon, and night, season after season, passion that breaks time open wide so you can taste the mystery inside. Well, this story begins in the night. It begins in the middle of the story, in the middle of the night. When the thief comes, when the bridegroom comes, when the bride has long since given up hope, and those foolish virgins, they're snoring. When only a whore is awake. Woo. I hope everybody heard that. <laughs> yes. Now I can see you again. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. It's just great to hear that kind of honky tonk going on there. Yeah, like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> So some of you may not be aware that Elizabeth is you know, not only this amazing poet and novelist, but a singer and songwriter. So um, hopefully you'll get the Maven Song CD, which is just really fun to listen to. It's got wonderful 13 great goddess songs. And a lot of the um, songs are from um, uh, Bright Dark Madonna, I believe. Is that right? Well, not all of them, but some, quite a few, because when I wrote Bright Dark Madonna, Don, I was in a singing group and I was writing a lot of stuff. Great. Yeah. Okay, well, let's open this up for um, other people to um, come on in and uh, ask questions, make comments. Um, I'm hoping some of you may have figured out how to unmute your microphone, but if not, just um, write in. Uh, I've got, can yeah. you see the. Um, Chat on is your chat open, um, Elizabeth? I don't know. Okay, do you see the little icon? I think it's the second one that says chat. 
it says um, it says chat, and I clicked on it, and it says twenty three right now, and it says Jane Stephanie Eve. That's all I can see. Okay. All right. Well, um, anyway, I see a lot of people saying, "Wow, that was amazing and beautiful," and oh, goosebumps, wow. and and um, so everybody can talk now. So just well, I can't. I tried to open the chat, but oh, now I see it. Yeah, I see it now. Yep. Okay. Good. Where I lost it. <laughs> no. oh, hey, Angela, you're on. I am. I yeah. clicked off and clicked back on. <laughs> oh, good. I can hear you. So, do you want to say anything, Angela? Um, Welcome. Where are you? I came at quarter till seven, and my phone wouldn't do it right. So I apologize for being disruptive. It's okay, oh, this, well, Elizabeth. <laughs> this is a huge learning. I curve. totally understand about technical difficulties. <laughs> Took me an hour to unmute my microphone the other day. I had to go into my hardware to get it to turn on. So if anybody's having a problem, I understand. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah. Angela, where do you live? Um, I'm currently living in West Palm Beach, Florida. I'm from Omaha, where with Lisa, who's with Jane. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> but uh, I live in Florida right now. Oh great! That's so funny. Yeah. Okay. Well, so um. Do you have a question for Maeve or Elizabeth? Me? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I, I, I have one of my favorite quotes from Magdalene Rising. Can I read it? And then I don't know if it will tumble Please. into anything. <laughs> Let me grab it. Hold on. Okay. And when, when I first read this, I, I had to keep... I read it again and again because it it struck a place in me where it's like I know that. And so uh, it's in the Pop Goes the Hazelnut chapter. Oh. And and Mabel, Maeve says, uh, if I'm giving the impression that having been restored I was unchanged, let me amend it. You can be made whole again, but it is a different, I might cry reading that. <laughs> It is a different, more complex whole than if you had never been broken. There are new fault lines, new weaknesses, new strengths. I just thought that was very powerful, and, and I assume that you spoke from a place as Maeve and as the author that understood stood that. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that was a beautiful choice. Thank you. You want to It wasn't a question. <laughs> Yeah, Elizabeth, anything about writing that or coming to that um, point in the story that you want well, to speak to? I think it's just as, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering names, just as... Uh, that was um, Angela. <laughs> that just as Angela said, that, that Maeve is speaking from experience, and of course I know about that too. I think we all do. Yes, as women, I, I think so. We yeah. understand that transformation. Yeah. I'll, my only question, I guess, I'll try it. When you guys were talking about the term prostitute and whore, I I believe that maybe what is wrong is not is, is that we're getting our our history from male or cultures that didn't understand what women's true sacred roles were, and so we have this term whore or prostitute that maybe men could kind of attach, but it's not in the same limited view, like how, oh, was Mary Magdalene a whore or a prostitute? Well, a man, a man defined that in a male written Bible, right. not Mary herself. <laughs> right. so she may have been a sacred priestess of sorts, like you have, you know, you know shown her. Does that, am I making sense? Yeah. Well, she, yeah, and I think, well, yeah, and I think we still are in a pretty patriarchal world. Yes. Um, I think that Maeve, you know, I don't know if any of you know Starhawk. Um, mm -hmm. She liked to, she wanted to reclaim the word witch so that, I think Maeve probably says somewhere, I don't know whether Maeve said it or whether I said it, but if you can, if someone can control you by calling you a witch or a whore or whatever it is and shame you that way, then um, they have some of your power. So I think part of what Maeve wanted to do is say yes and I'm right. more and. and in the, one of the um, in the cartoon book I wrote about her, there's a 
the part of the story is that someone is accusing her of being oh, someone is quoting some fundamentalist is quoting from the Bible and he's calling her the great whore and she says well thank you I do my best I'm sure <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. that's part of what Maeve's purpose is yeah. is to sort of say you know you you think you can control me by calling me a whore it's not going to happen right but yeah I mean I think definitely men and women people have used the word that way to control other people and shame other people and exclude other people yeah lovely thank you <laughs> I was looking for that um, that beautiful poem um, what is it thunder sons or something under perfect mind yes um, yeah. do you remember the words um, I am the whore and the holy one yeah, you know, um, I was very inspired by that. Yeah, right. And that to me is just amazing that that came um, from you know writings at that time that uh, really spoke about the goddess, and she's yeah. claiming, "I am the whore. I am the holy one. I'm the mother. I'm the sister. I'm the I'm the everything." Mm -hmm. And the honored and the scorned one. Right. There was no distinction made. Um, there was no good and bad. Um, I believe my understanding is it was um, Pope Gregory, and I don't know, maybe like the sixth, sixth yeah. century, who who one of them popes. Yeah, what? It would have been Gregory. Yeah. And tell tell us about him. Uh, what your understanding is in terms of he was the one that kind of conflated all the Marys and. Yeah, I don't know as much about church history because I did so much research on the first century. I didn't get to the other centuries particularly. But yeah, I think he just decided that it would be, I think he just decided to imagine that she was a prostitute and to, you know, he made a sort of archetype stereotype with it. Right. Because, you know, there was the virgin whore dichotomy and I guess he just thought, well, yeah, hell, oh well, yeah, there was the virgin Mary and then there's the whore Mary. Right. And yeah. Probably made a good story as far as he was concerned. And there we have the split between the, um, you know, the good, the good Mary and the bad Mary, and um, it seemed like Mary Magdalene, you know, she got pushed underground and um, oh, yeah. lost and hidden, whereas Mary, the mother, who was the virgin, um, you know, got all the glory in a sense. Yeah, Maeve was a little annoyed about that. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, wait a minute. This is my church in the cave. Um, that was her cave. There's a little shrine to the Virgin Mary. And it's like, wait, she's got more candles than I do, and this is my cave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that in the in the book where she's kind of saying at one point, like, what about my story? You know? Yeah. What's happened here? What's happening? And then finally just decides that her story she knows with Jesus is is enough, um, but we're rediscovering it. You know, we're. I think we human women are rediscovering Mary Magdalene. Yeah, I think she has to come back periodically. Mm -hmm. I think as a child in Sunday school, and I mean, I can remember being so fascinated with her, way mm -hmm. more than any other woman in the Bible. She just seemed so much more compelling and even though I was kind of naive and didn't quite even get you know all that was implied with who she was she I was drawn to her maybe it's her name <laughs> you know Magdalene is just kind of beautiful in itself you know <laughs> yeah she was definitely an interesting character more interesting than than most and maybe that was it you know we all kind of saw the humanity in her and uh, even though she's sort of portrayed as this, you know, sinner in some ways, um, but then again, there's a there's a lot she of different was, characters yeah. that have gotten smashed into her. Oh yeah. Well, one of the most moving things about her is the resurrection scene itself. I mean, that's where she gets her big moment. Yes, in the Bible or in your story? In the, oh, in my story too. But in the Bible. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't get that much in the Bible. I mean, none of them do, really. You you don't get a lot to go on. Right. But we know that, in at least in one of the Gospels, I mean, in all the Gospels, the women were there first, and one of them, it was her by herself. Right. The men were hiding. 
I love in your book, I mean, that to me is one of the most beautiful scenes when, you know, she's with him in the tomb and then they, they make love and, um, you know, Isis is there and um, it's reminiscent of Isis and finding Osiris, this dismembered mm -hmm. body and, and then um, making love to him and having, you know, God begets their child, Horus. So I love the way it all kind of dovetails together. And, um, yeah, I think quite a few people have really have connected, a lot of people have connected her with Isis. Yeah. Yeah, which makes sense. It does. Yeah. Anybody else have a question or comment they want to make? Can can I be heard? Yes, Carol. Oh yay! I found the microphone button. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Carol. I'm Jane's friend from Whangarei, and I saw your artworks as Jane made them, and I think I've even written something on the back of them. Mm. So, it is really precious to see them on the wall. And I'd like to say thank you for my signed copy of Maven Song. And I played that again this morning. And it's a mountain song that is just still my favourite. Um, I think it touches a chord about my eldest daughter. Mm. But I would like to say that it's been Jesus for me that has been amazing because I've been a bit anti Jesus for years mm -hmm. and now I think he's a pretty cool dude from your books. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, <it's> rehabilitated. <laughs> it has. It's been um very good for me. So thank you. Oh. I'm glad. Um yeah I just I I like him now after what you've written. So I actually speak nicely about him and I have to hold your view of him um, up, actually. He's the one I find with today. So thank you. Oh, well, I think one of the fun things for me about Maeve is that she gets to tell him off, you know, when he is, and, and throw figs at him. <laughs> and he's human enough to be able to respond to that. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm glad it works for you. Thank you. One thing about Jesus, um, he really did hold women in esteem at that time, apparently, and treated them as equals. He had a number of, you know, female followers and even benefactors. And you know, I, I get the impression, and again, it kind of got lost in the in the gospels that were selected, but that you know he. Um, he treated them with respect, and unfortunately, the patriarchy that came after him did not. Right. Anyone else want right. to ask a question? Oh, go ahead, Elizabeth. Did you I said to... even in the early church, they had more of a role than they do in some Right. Yeah. They were leaders. And... Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to say anything? Can you hear me? Eve, yes. Yes, am I on? Okay. Hi. 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 Um, hi. So, um, thank you so much for these books that have changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I went, I got into sex and God and realizing that the divide between God and sex, I feel, was my biggest block to healing my mm -hmm. life. So, um, I think the question I have was, all the books are so amazing to me. However, I was rereading part of the Red Robed Priestess, and the complexity you give to both Sarah, Boudicca, and when they all come together, how did you draw those characters? Because they're so diverse and complex, and where did you get your inspiration? Well, if, oh, this is going to be broadcast. I don't know how much I can I know. Um, it's a, yeah, I guess it's a spoiler alert. I should. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I'm not worried about spoiling. I'm just worried about. Well, my daughter's not going to watch this. Um, <laughs> Sarah, my I have a daughter who is uh, very much the inspiration for Sarah. But not, okay. you are all sworn to secrecy. Okay, we won't tell anyone. It's not like uh, once I said. You know, I, I actually described Sarah to her, and you know, as a pirate and everything. She said, "Oh, this has nothing to do with real life, does it, Mom?" Because she is a bit of a pirate. <laughs> um, but Boudicca 
is not based on anyone I know. I just just imagine, well, what would it be like to be her? Um, to be born into the world that she was born into with the conflicts that she has and, you know, having been left by her mother and told all those things about her mother which were not true mm -hmm. and all the things about her father that weren't true. Yeah. And I just, like, and she, I just, she just kind of came to me as she was and revealed herself and it, it, she's a painful... She's a, I think she's a true tragic figure, I think, as I imagine her, but also I think she was in actual life a tragic figure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To, to me, like, Maeve is, to me, my hero being the most honest person in the face of the hardest times, to be honest. You know, when she has to overcome her mother's telling her that a truth is a story well told. Yeah. And, and then be willing to tell her daughters the most hard truth to hear and so yeah yep and i think that kind of runs through all of them like what is the truth and what's the story and how do you tell it mm -hmm. and yeah yeah to me because Maeve is always generally willing or eventually willing to be honest yes in the hardest times and when it's the hardest to do and so i just yeah the complexities yeah. of that just blew me away well thank you yeah, that's a good point. And all that really comes to a head with Sarah at the end of Bright Dark Madonna and certainly with Boudicca. Yeah. Yeah, and Maeve has some tough challenges. Yeah, as a mother reading that, and I mean, I have sons mainly, and just reading that, being willing to be honest about the painful things from the past that mm. may hurt your child, and the yeah. willingness to still be honest. And yeah, although in the beginning with Sarah she spun quite a I mean she kind of did what her mothers did mm -hmm. unknowingly and then that that's what caused so much problem for her and Sarah mm -hmm. so maybe is yeah but that's an important thing to bring out I think yeah yeah because she does spin a tail for Sarah for a long time and that mm -hmm. that's caused that divide and yeah and then telling Boudicca the truth is even harder than telling Sarah yes yep mm -hmm. And having Sarah really put her, urge her on is is it's interesting. It was a, I think that was the most challenging book to write, but I feel I'm glad I did it. Mm -hmm. But there imagine. are times I said, "Why did I? Why? Why did I put that little seed about Boudicca in there? Oh, I don't want to tell this story." <laughs> but I'm I'm really glad I had to. Well, when you to me it brings it all back, and it also shows how the druid knowledge doesn't disappear completely, it just has to spread out. And, yeah. And so it doesn't really go away, it's just we lose it for a period so long. And, mm -hmm. and probably some, I don't know that that happened, but somehow that knowledge did survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's still yeah. with us in different forms, it's just mm -hmm. spread out and... Yeah. It's a diaspora. Elizabeth, did you know when you started um, the first book, Magdalene Rising, that you were going to have Boudicca come back at the end? I mean, was that planned? Did I know what? I, I missed. About, her, you know, um, Magdalene's first daughter, who that would be at that time? Yeah, I did. But, yeah, and I think by the time I got to the end of that book, I realized I was going to have to write more than one. When I started, I didn't think I was writing more than one book. And I planned to write only three, and then Bright Dark Madonna became such a big story that I felt like, whoa, I can't go on and tack that on the end of it. So that was a hard decision to make, but I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Sarah's story and um, Boudicca's story are certainly um, one that we want to spend time with. I mean, we don't know much about Sarah. So I really appreciated getting to know her. Yeah. Imagining her. Yeah, her character is so complex, and mm -hmm. seeing her interactions with Boudicca and with her mother, and that was yeah. so inspiring. Yeah, Maeve didn't get spared anything, <laughs> which was certainly one of the things that I wanted. Was if I'm going to have an incarnate goddess, I want her to go through all of it. Right not bow out at 30 still, you know, without going through the stuff that she had to go through. 
Yeah. Which all of us are going through one way or another, raising kids, dealing with aging parents, all of that. Yeah. She's the flesh and blood goddess. Yep. That we can relate to. Yeah. Elizabeth, did you want to say anything or ask any questions? Or Lisa? <laughs> Hi. 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 Yay. Well, I'm, I'm really interested in um, Eve's point about truth mm -hmm. and a story well told because for me, Maeve is such a true presence that she kind of embodies that idea about a story well told mm -hmm. um, make something true and uh, you know, she is a real presence in my life that I draw on when things are hard and mm. um, you know, uh, she gives me a good kick in the bum too. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, she's not gentle with me either. And I really love that. Um, you know, Carol was still because when Carol and I used to meet, we have a group that meets, um, and we started to do some ritual things together. And every time I would mention God, Goddess, all it is, Carol would just go. <laughs> <laughs> she hated the idea of the whole God business. <laughs> but it, you know, that she's Maeve's brought this this softening into being human to me that um mm -hmm. is such a huge gift because to be a good person was to try and emulate the divine. Mm. So that was and that's more you know, like Stephanie, you were talking about the difference between um the sense of Mary uh Mother Mary, the Virgin Mary, and the Magdalene, and kind of made just bridges that gap for me in such a beautiful way because she does have that. Um, and she'd probably hate to hear me say that she was that she wasn't perfect. <laughs> but, you know, that, that whole sense that she is both um, divine and deeply human and flawed and perfect all at once. You know, she can hold all those things helps me to step into that role in my own life in a way that I just haven't found that anywhere else. Mm. You know, and I'm so deeply grateful for that. Um, like Eve said, the day that um, I found that book and started reading, I just, it really did shift things in a way that um, I can't explain. You know, it was, there was a sense of homecoming. Mm. Being able to soften into me, that was just um, quite, quite remarkable. So, and then I pestered all my friends like Carol, and you've got to read this book. <laughs> <laughs> Maeve and I are very, very grateful. Grateful. That, very grateful. Very grateful. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it's just, um, and you've been such a gracious to me. <laughs> well, this has been a gift. Um, to yeah, the people I've gotten to know life. through Maeve, that's been a gift. And I, one other thing I'd like to say to all readers is that I think reading is a creative act. Um, a book really, I mean, Maeve is alive in your lives, and that means that she's real. It's not that I wrote it. It's, it's not just that I wrote it. It's that she's real to you and has her own life that I don't even know about. What That's thrilling to me. That, you know... That's what you hope for. That's when a book is complete. Well, man, you did it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would also oh, like a film option would be good if anyone <laughs> knows any. <sighs> but, a film, yeah. did you say? I think it's time for Megan and me to get paid. We're we're hoping for a film option to happen one of these days. Yeah. And then have you worked on it? Have you worked on this? Or maybe a mini series. I don't know. Oh, but, that would be good. But what's really happy, what's very happy making to me is just this just that to hear people's stories and to hear how Maeve is part of your story. That's the best. That's really better than anything. Yeah, you've really touched a chord, Elizabeth. Um, I think so many women who read it, you know, like I said, that, she's the one we relate to. She's the goddess down to earth. Yeah, and that's what I that's why I wrote it really because I wanted that. I was like Jesus is good. He had feet. I like that he was human. I like that he wasn't perfect. I think Maeve makes it very 
clear that he wasn't perfect. And I like that about him, but he's a guy. Right. And he got off, you know, he left too early. So we need, I felt like I needed Maeve. So I'm really glad if, I, if she's there for other people too. And I have to say one of the things, um, when you first started the blog with Maeve and you asked the question. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have read that far, but we, I asked Maeve, because I have two young daughters, what advice Maeve would give for the girls. Mm. And I can't tell you how strengthening that, that advice has been. I, I don't know if any of you have read it, but Maeve told me to tell the girls that they needed to make friends with the stones and the trees because when everybody else turned their back on them, the stones and the trees would be there for them still. Mm. And, you know, that's, um, that's helped shape my parenting and it's shaped the way I parent the child inside myself as well. Mm. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's been incredibly um, nourishing. So, yeah, I want to thank you and May for that as well. No. Oh. That's good to know. Yeah, Maeve, ha we haven't done too much blogging lately, but it is there if anyone wants to go back in the archives. It's a, I think you can get to it from my website. Yeah. Great. But, oh, I'm glad, Jane. I'm glad you asked that question. If people want, yeah, I'd probably write more blogs if I had good questions like that. It's wonderful that you can pull that in, Maeve's wisdom like that. Um, I thought I might read something that I had picked out on Bright Dark Madonna, and it's um, the conversation between Maeve and John, the disciple, who she has um, an affair with. Um, and he's a little bit, well, she just starts to divulge um, what happened in the tomb with Jesus. And... Um, she says, um, he rose in me, he rose in me, and all at once his sobs lodged in his depths, wrenched themselves free and rose to a wail. Shh, I said, rocking his heavy bulk as best I could, shh, don't wake Miriam. How could I ever dare to go in unto you, he pick up his words like a child. John, love, I am not the Ark of the Covenant for Jesus' sake. I am not the Holy of Holies. Oh, but you are, he wept. That is exactly what you are. I drew him closer to me, refusing the distance he meant to put between us. John, listen to me. I am a woman, just as Jesus was a man. That's not very reassuring, he said after a moment. <laughs> Yeah. What, what do you mean? Well, Jesus isn't a man, not just a man, not anymore. He rose from the dead, and you, the Most High, forgive me, for he knows I am no pagan idolater, but you, well, you must be some kind of a goddess. And frankly, Mary, that scares the shit out of me. I wish I could say, don't be ridiculous, or how much did you have to drink, but he had stumbled on some truth or mystery that I could not deny. I hadn't even told him about finding the robes of Isis in the tomb that no one could see once I left the garden, or of hearing Jesus sing a hymn to, me, to her, that is, to me. John, listen, I began not sure of what I would say. If what you say is true of him, of me, then it is also true of you, of all of us. Why else would anyone be here? struggling and loving the way we do. Isn't that what he came to show us? What, how to become gods? John was wary. No, I said, how to be both, to be divine and human, to go between the worlds. And to me, that is just the beauty of this story, and I think what we're all seeking is how to be divine and human. Yeah, I think that's the theological heart of all the books. Yeah. And I don't know if it's heresy or not, but it is definitely the theological heart. Yeah. It's my kind of heresy. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, and it, can you hear me? Yes. I, I don't you think as women? I mean, that's what we do. We're we're so physical, and uh, you know, from our menstrual cycles to birthing children or not birthing children or you know, fixing food or heat, putting our hands on someone. I mean, men can do some of those things, but women, we do this thing that is very human and yet divine. Mm. You're a man looking at it. <laughs> they yeah. Can't see, they can't see, you know, it, 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 that's, that's, it is our life to go between the worlds and it yeah. is, yeah. Instead of wrestling with one or the other. <laughs> mm -hmm. My camera's up here, by the way. It probably looks like I'm looking down. <laughs> I don't even know where my camera is. Oh, yes, I do. It's there. <laughs> it's yeah. all good. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I think that women have always been, um, for better or worse, associated with the flesh, and the flesh has been despised. So, in... um. You know, that's a generalization about our culture and maybe not just our culture. And I think that that's part of what the book is about is saying, yep, we have flesh. Let's celebrate it. Let's be in it. Yeah. Let's be embodied. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's so time to take back the, our sacred sexuality and, you know, let it be a part of who we are instead of having to split off from it. And yeah. That's been a great huge wound for a lot for a lot of us, for a lot of the history of the world. Still is. Yeah. We're not no, it still is. Yeah. One of the quotes that I really love is, um, by our wounds we are healed. Mm. And so, you know, that really um resonates for me that Yes, we've had this this history of all of these woundings around what it is to be women, but when we can embrace those woundings and use them to make us more compassionate and stronger, mm -hmm. um, that's what the world's kind of waiting for. So, yeah. 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 That's big for me. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that quote from that, when Maeve says that, I guess she's playing off on something that is in the Gospels that says, by, by his wounds we are healed, or by his stripes we are healed. But no, by our wounds, we heal. We heal our own wounds. And horrors, tears cure anything. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Does anybody else um, have any more comments or questions? Do you want to ask, know about Mary Magdalene? Maeve. Well, if that's it, we can wrap it up. And um, anybody before you say goodbye? Well, I was. Just, I think I have a comment. Okay. I was just thinking um, how the whole entire thing in the story. It is such. Whether it's Maeve or Jesus how we're really being taught to heal ourselves, that the power to heal us mm -hmm. does come from within us. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, it seemed, I was just, as you guys were saying that, it, are you women, I was thinking the power to heal us is within us. I think we're told in our society and by churches and that, it's, you know, we need to rely on a church or a government or a corporation or, and it's really within us and, you know, throughout the story, you see them, you know, feasting and enjoying each other, and um, I remember as I was rereading The Passion of Mary Magdalene, the scene where she makes a comment that Jesus can't possibly settle down into Temple Magdalene because, you know, the man can't settle into her house, and I was hoping that maybe in today's day and age, we can get past a point where, you know, the gender roles are so defining. Yeah where a man can settle down in the temple or we can all, you know, as we don't have these defining roles that, you know, and that hopefully we can get away from that. Yes. That would be wonderful. And we can all party on. <laughs> yeah. 
when the sacred and the profane can come together. Yeah. 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 I think maybe maybe sure has to Courage and courage, her spunk and all that. And I, I did want to ask. Somebody might want to mute your microphone because I'm getting a little feedback here. So there, that's better. Um, I read uh, your bio on Amazon and it said you were expelled from boarding school for nudity, Elizabeth. And I just yes. cracked up when I read that because I thought, well, okay, so we know where Maeve got some of her um, moxie. So. Yeah. Do tell. Oh. Well, I'm a minister's daughter. So, yeah, I kind of had to do stuff like that. There was a summer term, and I went skinny dipping all the time. Oh. Yeah. That's not so scandalous. Yeah, I didn't think it was that scandalous, but the teachers did at the time. This was way back in the day, you know. That's so funny. The principal was from Texas. Oh. We got there in this little progressive school, but he said that he thought that I was either, he thought that I might be psychopathic. Oh, why? <laughs> because he said, how could you live in this society for 15 years and <laughs> do something like that? And be nude. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't want, I didn't wear my shoes either. I just was into being bad at the time. I love it. Well, I, you know, a lot of my time I spent being too good and too responsible, and I kind of went back to being too good and responsible. But I had my little moment. <laughs> but Maeve, um, Maeve is, uh, Maeve doesn't have the kind of angst and guilt that I have. She doesn't fret over things as much as I do. So she's very helpful there. Like Jane, you said she kind of kicks you in the butt sometimes. Yeah, she's good for that. She's like, get over yourself, you know. <laughs> so. Don't take yourself too seriously. Right? Yeah. So yeah. she's real helpful to me. And she isn't, I mean, I would say she's more my role model than I'm hers. I mean, she's, I'm more modeled on her than she is on me. Well, I like to be. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. I'm playing at it. That's a good, it's a good alter ego to have. I mean, it must be lots yeah. of fun. Oh, she's fun. <laughs> she's really fun. And um, yeah, I miss her a lot. I miss working on those books. I bet. Yeah, it was. It's been hard. Yeah, it's been a hard couple of years. Kind of grieving, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of grieving. I'm writing a mystery novel now, but. Yeah, and I wanted to mention that um, you have a couple of other books about goddesses. I have uh, one of them, The Return of the Goddess, and um, is it the the Wild Mother about Lilith? I haven't read it yet. So, has anybody else read those? Yes, I've read The Wild Mother. You have, Eve? Mm hmm It's wonderful. Yeah, that really intrigues me. So, it's great to know that there are other goddesses out there that, you know, if we've read the Maeve Chronicles, we can dive into some, some more. I, I'm being shy <laughs> because I've only been able to read the second and fourth books. Oh, that's okay. But, but I'm, but I'm, yes, I'm excited to wrestle them from somewhere else. Um, but I just want to give give thanks though because I do feel I had to go outside of my own tradition to kind of find that place of healing of 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 the divine within myself from other traditions. And so this these books and Maeve have really sort of filled that piece back in that I can have my own. Celtic Christian background that does does have that deep honoring of love and humanness along with the divine. I mean, I know it's in the original teachings. It just got you know whitewashed over by the the, the church. Um, so I'm just really excited to go back and start with the first book and visit the other ones that I have read. Um, to sort of it just feels whole, like I feel more whole knowing I have that foundation. I don't have to be in this other tradition that has been very nourishing, but it's not my lineage. Um, so, thank you. Elizabeth's gone, so she can get back I was hoping she'd pop back in. Not exactly. It looked like the power went, maybe, because all the lights went dark around here. Yeah, it was dark. 
Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So huh. maybe maybe the power went out or something. Oh, it hurt on her end. Yeah. yeah maybe. Well, I had trouble getting her back on before, so she might not know exactly where to go. Get back in. So. I guess we could just wrap it up. Um, thank you all for, for coming, and um, I'll say goodbye to Elizabeth for all of us. <laughs> thank you. Thank hey, you. Stephanie, thank you so much Thanks, for Stephanie. Um, Stephanie. putting this together. It was yeah. just fantastic. Yeah. And, um, I'm so looking forward to oh, the work, yeah. you know, your goddess workshop. I'm just really excited about because the other ones have been so nourishing, and it really it feels like I'm building this great structure around who I want to be as a woman and so yeah every time I join the circles it really helps that so I'm looking forward to this next one. Thank you. I, I really do think that for women developing a relationship with the goddess, uh, these archetypes are just so rich and we can just, you know, uh, this idea of being the human and the divine, I think we're always looking for that bridge and the goddess gives us that. Um, that we, you know, have difficulty finding in the patriarchal religions out there. So if anybody is interested in my Goddess Eve course, you can go to www.thegoddesstemple.net and uh, you'll find out more about the course. And it's a three-month summer course. So I hope you guys will join me and we'll, and we'll explore more about the two Marys and Sekhmet and Guinevere. So thank you all for being here. I loved meeting you and um, it was wonderful talking about Mary and uh, hopefully we'll see Maeve on Facebook. She does have her own Facebook page. You guys probably all, all know that. But if anybody else that may want to connect with Elizabeth, uh, Maeve Ruad, which is R-H-A-U-D, is uh, she's on Facebook, and you can have her beautiful breasts displayed on your Facebook page <laughs> as a friend. Not everybody can be, you know, topless on Facebook. Oh, there she is. Elizabeth is coming back. Can say goodbye. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what happened. My computer went black. Uh, we thought yeah. something like that had happened. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. We were just uh, winding up, and uh, we were good. I'm glad you're here, so we can say yeah. goodbye to you. And do you have any last words? Oh, um, I I don't know. I think something's happening with my dealing. Um, last words. The blessings of Isis go with you, Queen of Stars, Mother of Grain, she whose tears are the rain, she whose embrace is the sky, her wings of protection enfold you, her breast be your place of rest. Her river with you, wherever you wander. Her river to guide you home. So the blessings of Maeve and Isis. And thank you so much because really this, I, there is no greater joy than knowing that Maeve is alive and well in your beautiful hearts. I really, really am so grateful. And she thank you, on. Stephanie, for doing this. Thank you, Elizabeth and me. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Bye, everyone. And yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Love. Bye, everybody. I'm going to sign out before my computer crashes again.